Jeremy Ellis here, MakerRockSetter.com. I'm going to show you how to put um, TensorFlow Magenta Music Generation Program onto Online Cloud9. So once you've logged in, here's your dashboard. So we're going to create a new workspace. I'm just going to call it Magenta, Magenta um, 14. Now you have to go to my GitHub site. It's called My TensorFlow Magenta Online. Click there and copy that. It's just this URL with .git on it. So go back here. Um, we're going to clone from a git. So I'm going to paste that. See, it's just the URL for my repository with .git on. Uh, we want to make a blank repository uh, workspace on Cloud9. And we're going to create that. Now, while that's creating, um, here's this GitHub site. It only has a few things. It has a setup program, which runs through setting up TensorFlow. It's a bash uh, program. It's just step by step what you're supposed to do to set it up. Um, and so you can look through that, make sure everything's okay. Uh, then it has another one, which is the bash file that runs Magenta. It's a couple of sections here. There's the main starting point. Then there's generating the uh, training batches, and then there's outputting. It's outputting five songs, each one 64 notes long. Uh, the RNN is going to have 50 layers, that kind of thing. So let's go back to Cloud9. There it is. That's my repository. Now here's a couple important steps. One is right here, we're going to have to show the home. And that's got a bunch of extra stuff up here because I'm installing this as easy as I can by taking uh, one of my other repositories for installing on Ubuntu. The other thing you've got to do is here where it says memory, we've got to bump it up. It will not install at one, point, uh, one gig. It needs 1.25 gigs of RAM. This is a pro version and 19 bucks a month. So I'm going to hit, so it starts with five gigs instead of the two for the free versions. Uh, you can't, simply can't do this on the free version, which is unfortunate. So I'm going to resize that. Now it has the bare minimum 1.25 gigs. When I install this on my Ubuntu laptop, it's 6.6 uh, .6 gigs of RAM and everything works way better. Anyway, let's go through this. I'm going to right click on the setup. I'm going to right click run it. And let's see, there we go. I'm going to expand this out a little bit so we got some space. It doesn't like having it too small. And right down there at the bottom of the screen, it says press enter. Uh, make sure you click on this first. So I'm going to hit enter. I'd like to move this up just a little bit so you see that last line. There's only a couple of steps we have to do. One is uh, just to OK some kind of installation. And what I'm going to do instead of sitting here is I'm going to go to a pre-installed one and just show you what you end up with. Basically, we we set up a couple. There we go. OK, so configuring Oracle, hit OO. I got to click first. Click there, hit OK, then tab over to yes, hit OK. And I think the rest of this installs totally fine. Now, the problem with 1.25 gigs is when it does start doing the training run, they're very slow. Now I'm going to try to give you another option where you take training runs from other people. I have a GitHub site here. Uh, no, this is the one for the Linux install. Uh, there we go. Where it has a whole bunch of training runs. Probably the best one here is this 2000. Um, and inside there it would have a zipped training run. So you wouldn't have to on uh, Cloud9 do the training, which would take probably a day or more. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go back to my Cloud9 uh, C9.io dashboard. And here's the one that's installing, but this is the one I want to open. And we'll briefly go back to that other one just to see if everything's fine. But uh, let's go have a look at this. That should definitely move a little easier than, there we go. Now it's running TensorBoard here, which may have a couple little glitches in it. 
but this is what you're going to get. Um, here's the basic workspace. If I was more impressed with this on Cloud9, I would have got everything onto the workspace. But as you can see in, remember, you've got to have this show home in favorites. Here's my magenta. Okay, so that folder structure has all the magenta stuff. There's Basil, which is used for building. There's another copy of my uh, repository, which sometimes things aren't copied over. Some of these files don't get copied over. And then there's magenta. Well, if we look in magenta, it has these links. A link to your MIDI. Those are your inputted MIDIs. There are the defaults, example, example, and, and that really shouldn't be there. Uh, then there's your primer. Here's the default primer. It's a mid file and it just starts the sequences. Um, there's your runs, run one, run two, run three. We presently have run one already done. If we go back to that other one that's building at the moment, it won't have done that yet. And then a link to the temporary, which has a whole bunch of temporary stuff. Okay, now um, here it does have one, two, three, four, all the files got installed in the magenta area. That's good because this primer one we can run every once in a while. Um, so let's have a look. All you're really interested in is this final generated. There are your media files. I'm going to download one. Uh, where's download? Download. Um, sure, let's make this um, best. And let's see if I can find it. Oh boy, okay, let me go through here. Let's just click back on the, the thing that's downloading at the moment. See, it's still downloading and installing. I'm just going to get to my site. Okay, so I'm going to try to play that one we just downloaded. There's got to be easier ways to work with media files. Let's see what happens. I just clicked on it. Um, why is it playing? There we go. Okay, that's the primer. And then this is what it's generated. Now this is only using two MIDI files. And it's quite short. Now I tend to change those things with my my one that, um, where did it go? Where's my magenta? In magenta, this here file, I tend to make larger runs and only one output instead of five. And it just works nicer for me. Uh, I'm going to try running that one right now and just so we've got everything installed. Here's your link to your MIDI files, your link to your primer files, your generated ones. And I'm also going to open up this one, run one, run two, run three. Uh, what I want to do, I want to delete this one. Oh, shoot, I always do that. Uh, just delete that whole file. Why is I'm, why am I not being able to delete it? Okay. Delete. There we go. Okay, so now I don't have a zero one. This primer file, um, let me pull this down somehow. If I go into it, it just loads uh, 650 notes, but only one MIDI file instead of all of those MIDI files. Uh, MIDI files. So I'm just going to run this file and hit run, and. You see, it's just going to come up here. It should generate a file there eventually. And that's a longer, a longer recording. There it showed up. Okay, so that one will play longer. Um, now, something interesting is here, I've got a run one. I'm going to change that to run four. Things are pre-programmed to work with run one. And I'm going to try to um, bring in some pre-made runs. 
Now I know my GitHub site here, we got some research. So I'm going to grab that URL and get back here. So git clone um, that URL. We'll come down here, that should show up. There's the music research. So I'm going to go in there, open a terminal, and I'm going to try to copy one of those zip things. Uh, actually, I'm going to go inside a little bit more. Let's find one of the good ones. Uh, let's use this one. I'm going to try to get that zipped file. So I'm going to open terminal. And what I want to do is I want to unzip. And oh, I should ls list it first. Then unzip. Um, we've got the file. This one right here, MIDI. Let's see, it's got a zip. But I want to get it into the directory, so slash D. I want to try to find out how to get it right in here. So I'm just going to open that terminal right now and PWD. Okay, so that's where I want this file to go. So copy it. Let's go back to my line there and probably best to give it a slash. Let's see what happens when it unzips. There, it put it in the right spot. Always amazing with Ubuntu commands. And I'm going to change it to run one. And if I can, I'm going to delete all these runs. Please do all. So now I've got nothing there. So let's go back to that primer one, run it. And hopefully inside, oops, inside the generated, it will, ooh, it didn't like it. Okay, so much for that. Now, what went wrong? We've got our checkpoints. Oh, I know. Darn it. Um, I know what it is. It's a two, it's a three layer. So in my primer, I have to define that it only had three layers. I'm glad I caught that. Uh, let's run it again. And let's see if we don't get an error, error this time. It's looking better. Come on, generate something. Looks like it generated something. I'm going to uh, download that again, just so we can hear it, whatever. But, um, we got some great name, great. And then let's try playing. Okay, there's the primer. And then using my trained one, here comes whatever it's produced. Seems kind of random at the moment. Okay, well. There you go. Set that down. Hope you enjoy playing around with neural networks, uh, artificial intelligence, and this is Jeremy Ellis, rockseta.com. Have a great day.